Hello everyone. In this video, let's go through Java for loop. In this video, we'll be going through what is Java, the different loops in Java, what is for loop, the variations of for loop, and the issues that can be encountered using for loop. First, let's talk about what Java is. It's a fast, reliable, and secure programming language that can be used in several websites and applications. It can be used to create applications in a single computer or one that could be distributed across several servers and clients. Java can be used in several scenarios independent of the system that it is used on. Say you had to print hello all three times. You could do it by typing hello all in the system three times. But what if you had to print a hundred times? What if you had to print a thousand times? The solution to this is the use of looping statements. There are three types of loops that are used in Java. For loop, while loop, do while loop. When some condition evaluates to be true, these loops execute a set of instructions. Although they are similar to each other in the basic functionality that they follow, their syntax and the time required for checking conditions greatly differ. Let's go into detail about the for loop. For loops are used in situations where the number of iterations that are required to be performed are known. The for loop uses a single statement which involves components that may span multiple statements in other looping methods. The syntax of a for loop is as shown below. The components of the syntax are initialization. Here the variable that is to be used is initialized. It can be a variable that has already been declared or one that is localized to the loop alone. Condition. As an entry control loop, the condition is checked when entering the loop. The response obtained is a boolean value. It also tests the exit condition of the loop. Increment or decrement. In the course of the execution of the loop, the variable needs to be incremented or decremented for its next iteration. In this example program, x is initialized to be 11 at the beginning of the loop. Checking the condition that x is lesser than 20, the statement value of x along with its value is printed. Then the value of x is incremented. The same process continues and prints the value of x as 12. This continues until the condition fails and the statement following the loop is executed or the program ends. Let's now consider the variations of a for loop. This method is used to traverse an array or a collection. It is advantageous over using a simple for loop as it doesn't require repeated incrementation or a subscript notation. Rather than an index, it works on individual elements. The syntax is as shown. In this example, we chose an array A with the elements 80, 81 and 82. So using the for each loop, we print items one after another as long as they belong to the specified loop. Let's now look at a nested for loop. A nested for loop involves one loop inside another. There would be an inner loop that appears inside the body of another outer loop. Consider this example. Here we can see two for loops, one within the other the outer loop with i and the inner one that uses j. Here we assign n as the number of times we want the iteration to be performed. So in the initial iteration, in the outer loop we check if i is lesser than or equal to n, which is 5 here. As soon as the condition is satisfied, we move into the inner for loop, where we check if the value of j, which is 1, is lesser than or equal to that of i, which is 1 here. As these conditions are satisfied, we execute the print statement. Now j is incremented. Since j is greater than i, we exit the loop back to the outer loop and perform the new line print operation. i is now incremented and the process continues until i is greater than 5. Labeled for loops. This method enables each loop to be assigned a name. This comes of additional use in situations that warrant the usage of nested loops. It allows a user to break or continue a specific loop. The syntax is, in this example, we specify an individual label for each loop. So when a break statement specifying a given loop is encountered, which in this case is the outer loop, the execution of A1 is stopped and the loop is exited. The output of the code is also given. There are also some issues that can be encountered using for loops. Some of these are infinite loops. A common mistake that can occur is that the loop may never exit and the loop runs infinitely. This only occurs if the condition fails for some reason. The output here in this example would be an infinite loop as the loop would continue to work as in no situation is the value of i 0. 
In certain situations, it is possible that when elements are added to a collection through the loop, a memory exception can be thrown. In the given example, you will see that at a certain point, we would run out of memory leading to a memory exception to be thrown. So here's a recap on what we've covered so far. For loops in Java are used when the number of iterations to be performed are known. The given syntax in one line summarizes the initialization, the conditions and the increment or decrement that needs to be done. There are certain variants of the for loop, for each loop, a loop that allows the user to traverse an array or collection, nested loops where there exists one loop with another, label loops, by labeling each of the nesting loops, exiting from a specific loop becomes easier. Some of the issues that can be encountered are running out of memory and due to some condition failing being caught in an infinite loop. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.